All right, our first one is, am I the asshole for planning a Disney trip without my stepdaughter and leaving her with her father? <laughs> I mean, it says poo mode activated, so I guess let's see. I, 41 female, and my husband, 41 male, have four children. I have one child from a previous relationship. He has two, and we have one together. We have always treated the children as equally as possible, though with extended family, they don't always go on the same trips if we don't go. Example, his parents take his children on vacations and my child doesn't want to go without me. This has never been an issue, but when we plan trips, we always take everyone. The problem is that my stepdaughter, 16 female, doesn't really like anything that anyone else does. Or she will like it until someone else does. Example, she really wanted to go on a winter trip to Colorado for skiing. None of the other children were that excited, but seeing as it's hard to find things she likes, we went. She was excited until the other kids started enjoying it too. Then she wanted to leave. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is pretty much what happens when we went on trips to the zoo, museums, anything. And if other people are already happy about it, she immediately hates the idea. Oh my god. <laughs> we thought maybe she just wanted time with each parent alone. So we did that with both her mom and dad. She still complained the whole time. Her counselor said maybe she wants activities with both parents to show they get along. They did that, but if they show any enjoyment at all, she hates whatever they are doing. Oh my god, what a hater. <laughs> We've done Girls' Day with her mom and I, and she hates it. We have found the less enthusiastic we are, the more she wants to do it. Oh my god. This applies to meals, too. If someone else likes something, she finds ways to criticize it. It's like she can't let anyone enjoy anything. She also likes things more if no one else wants to do them. This also happens when she goes to, with her aunt and cousins. Her sister is not like this at all. We've asked her if she has any insight. Their mother has too. And she comes up with nothing other than she's just a bit <laughs> and shrugs. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's mean. We let her choose other day trips, told her she can bring her friend, but it's the same. If she sees someone liking something she chose, she complains and says it was her idea like no one else can enjoy it. So this year, we had been talking about Disney for a while. My nephew has cancer and has always wanted to go with us because he has no siblings and not many friends because he's missed a lot of school. Aww! <laughs> Stepdaughter said it was stupid as soon as everyone else wanted to go. Oh my god. <laughs> Her father said he would have a lot of work to catch up on when he got back. He does seasonal work and has to take the work while he can. The kids agreed that they wanted to go and he wanted us to, so I made the plans and we decided to go back another year with all of us. I made the reservations for myself, sister, nephew, and three of our children. Deciding stepdaughter can stay back with dad since she didn't want to go anyway. My husband says I'm the asshole for not planning for her to come too, but I don't want her ruining the trip with complaints with my nephew there. Am I the asshole? Oh. Oh. She didn't even ask her, but I, I don't know. Like, edit. To clarify, I asked stepdaughter multiple times if she wanted to go as I planned, so I would know at each stage if she changed her mind. She was adamant every time she didn't want to go. Her dad says she always says she doesn't want to go but would regret missing out. This is based on last summer's vacation when she said she didn't want to go but loved it. We were at campground and it rained the whole time. We were pretty miserable, but she thought it was funny. She's 16. She's 16. I'm gonna I I'm gonna say not the asshole, honestly. I don't agree with ultimate poo mood because this is this is her own fault. <laughs> she keeps doing all of this and it's like, oh my gosh. I, I'm gonna say not the asshole. Oh, it no, doesn't have the thing. All right. I don't agree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if she keeps doing that. And it's also kind of quite concerning that she likes she likes it when everybody's having a bad time. She sounds like a little psychopath. It's kind of crazy. Like, I hate her. I don't blame stepmom. I think not the asshole. I don't know. I don't agree with poo mode activated it's honestly because like it's better somebody in her like somebody safe can like be like okay here's you've been saying it like this all the time like how are you going to learn i don't know i think i'm gonna say not the asshole i disagree with uh poo mode activated <laughs> though they are 16 they're a kid but it's like she keeps doing that i don't know i'm, I'm gonna stand i'm gonna stand with that <laughs> The second one is, am I the asshole for telling my friends I can't afford to split holiday costs equally and that I'll only pay for the activities I can budget for? 
I'm gonna say no, but you probably... I don't know, it feels bad, but maybe you shouldn't, like... Go? But I mean, you... if Like, I don't know, because if I'm going on a trip, I would want to pay everything equal... Well, I don't know. Because I would ha want to pay for, like, the stuff that I can. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to... I'm going with... I'm gonna say no, because they're like setting, they're letting them know like right off the bat. A few friends and I, a few friends and I are planning a holiday trip together. We've been talking about all the activities we want to do, but some of the options are really expensive, like fancy dinners and guided tours. Since my budget is a lot tighter than theirs, I told them that I'd love to join, but would only be able to pay for the activities that fit within my budget rather than splitting all costs equally. No, that's valid. That's so valid. This didn't go over well with a couple of friends. What? They feel that splitting everything equally is just what friends do. No! <laughs> and that it's awkward if I go off to do my own thing for cheaper options while they stick to the pricier plans. One friend even said that I'm, if I'm not willing to split everything evenly, I should reconsider going on the trip. I was wrong. If you're able to, like, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm wondering if I've been unreal. No, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> Well, I said maybe not go on the trip, but I think I'm 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 wrong on that statement. Now I'm wondering if I've been unreasonable by getting a boundary about what I can afford. Am I the asshole for telling my friends I won't be able to split all costs equally? I'm gonna say no because like how I'm sure they're all paying for how they get there and like their tickets and everything. So and like their stay, but all the other added stuff, yeah, not the asshole. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. The action I took that should be judged is telling my friends I can't afford to split holiday costs equally and that I'll only pay for the activities within my budget. This might make me the asshole because it could come across as me not being fully invested in the group's plans or as though I'm putting my own needs above the group dynamic. What do you mean? Your friends should be completely understanding of the fact. My friends feel like it's unfair for me to pick and choose what I want to pay for instead of splitting everything evenly. And I can see why they might feel that my decision can make things awkward or less cohesive. <laughs> I don't think that's the bad. Not the asshole. Firstly, congratulations for doing the right thing and having the money convo before the trip. Oh, yeah. Secondly, no, that is not what just what friends do. Yes, some friend groups may work that way, but in, the in, in this instance, real friends would understand that you were coming to them and explaining reasonably what you can afford. Why are they against you splitting the things you can and bowing out of the things you can't? It's not like they will be paying extra for you, literally. I mean, if your friends would like to know what my friend group would do, we would pitch in and cover for you on the things you couldn't afford because we can. How do they like the table turn there? That's what me and my, uh, me and my friends do. Your friends want you to go into debt in order to get the holiday with them, so, right? It's like being a completely, un like, saying they're being unreasonable is some weird behavior. Thank you, I appreciate the support and totally agree that bringing up finances before the trip is key. I'd love if they were as flexible as your friend group, honestly. If they really wanted me there, they wouldn't be so rigid about how we split everything. <gasps> the tea, but that's true. Because, like... Then it's like make it's going to put that awkward, but it's good that they had that before they got one on the trip and all. I think that I think yeah, OP definitely made the right call. Am I the asshole for no longer taking part in meals with my family because they want to accommodate my wife's allergies? No, what? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> they won't accommodate. So they like they have been given several chances. That's weird. Okay, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. My wife, 25 female, has food allergies. Shellfish and peanuts are her most serious ones, but she's also allergic to celery and soy. She's used to people not being willing to accommodate her or being lazy about it and thinking they can make food with one of those things in it and just not putting it on her plate. Damn. So she'll normally bring food if people seem unsure about what to do. When we first went to one of my family's dinners, she brought along some stuff she could eat because my mom had made it sound like she couldn't accommodate the allergies. But when we got there, mom was offended that she had brought food. <laughs> we explained why, and mom said in future she'd make food my wife could eat. Okay. I'll say this now. Before we moved close and started joining family dinners, my wife and family got along so well and everything was fine. But we moved to be closer to both of our families 18 months ago. My wife didn't bring anything the next time and mom had something she could eat. And for a few months, this was how it was. Then one of the days she served something specifically for my wife, but the rest of us had shellfish and soy in our food. 
My mom was not careful about food safety prep and there was contact between what my wife ate and what we ate and my wife had an allergic reaction. Mom said she felt bad and apologized. But then after that dinner, she decided it was too much hassle to make a whole other meal for my wife and then started making one meal again. It was a meal my wife couldn't eat. Okay. My wife started bringing her own food again, but my mom didn't like it. What do you want? What do you want? Hello? <laughs> That makes me mad. After some back and forth and me talking to my whole family about the issue and them saying it was unfair to expect mom to cook, but she was still adamant. She didn't want to do something separate for my wife. So I told them it was for the best if my wife and I just don't join them for these dinners. Valid. My family did not like this decision and we had faced criticism for this choice. Well, I have. They know I decided to just stop showing up. I told them the health and safety of my wife comes first and since she can't win and she's not risking another allergic reaction eating there and it wouldn't be fair to have her sit and watch us eat, then not going is our sole option remaining. Not the asshole. What is wrong? Why are you getting mad? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they may be the asshole. I made the choice to not attend more family dinners with my family because my wife's allergies were not being accommodated. Perhaps I could have tried harder to find a solution. I acted in what I feel is the safest thing for my wife, but maybe it was too strong of a reaction. Allergies are serious, dude. Like, why are you getting pissed off if she brings her own food? Like, it's- I just don't get pissed. If you want her there, if you want everybody there. I don't think it's that weird. I don't think it was a strong reaction. I'm confused on how your wife bringing her own food has any impact on everyone else enjoying the meal. What did your mother mother expect your wife to do? Sit there and watch everyone else eat? She finds it rude to bring your own meals to other people's dinner parties or family dinners, but she's not being provided foods she can safely eat, so the only other option would be she doesn't eat. Which is weird! That's weird! So your point is completely justified. Why should your wife attend a family meal where she can't eat? If your wife can't attend, why should you go? They believe we should be there because we're family. My counter to them was exactly, we're family. They should care about the health and safety of a family member. Oh! Oh! That's right! That's right! I would suggest you offer to host the next dinner. Present a menu consisting of things you know they don't like or are allergic to. Don't offer alternatives. Don't allow them to bring their own food. If they complain, tell them they should still attend because they're family. Damn. The thing is, why was mom willing to make her separate stuff, but after the one incident, she's like, well, if she couldn't eat it, then, then she can starve. What? Like, it's such a, it's such a weird thing. Like, it, it's fine if you don't want to do that anymore. That is totally fine. But the way that, that like, you're getting pissed because of it. What do you mean? Literally, what do you mean? Am I the asshole for missing another big moment for my half-siblings? Another? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes? I don't know. Is that my initial reaction? My initial reaction was kind of no. I don't know. But like they're saying half siblings and they said another. So those are those are two dings for me. So I'm gonna actually just go with yes. My dad is so inconsistent about being in my life. He and my mom divorced when I was one, but he bailed days after I was born. Damn. Came back when I was eight months old and my mom let him stay a month before realizing he wasn't serious about being a family with us and just used her for a place to stay. Damn. Once he realized she wasn't going to give in, he bailed again. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> he was in my life for a year when I was three to four years old. Then he was gone again. The next time I was eight. He was in my life for a few months under supervision, but he left again and he made two appearances when I was ten. Okay. He didn't really pay child support either, which I learned this summer. How old are you? Some money was given to me, but probably less than $400 in the last 16 years if what he said is right. Okay, so they're 16. When I was 13, he moved here for good, or so he says. He was married again and he had some kids with his wife. He went back to restart visitation with me, got, got some supervised visits again that became one overnight a month. Until finally, I have to spend every other weekend at his house, even though I don't want to. And I did speak to a judge about my wishes, but he told me it was in my best interest to have a relationship with my family. I really don't like being there, and I try to only sleep in the bed I have at his house. I never take anything I care about, and I don't have the room personalized or anything. 
The thing about all this is my dad and his wife encouraged their kids to spend time with me and engage with me. They like having me there, and they told me before they wished I'd spend more time there and with them. The kids did nothing wrong, but I don't want to focus on a relationship with them. I feel nothing for them, but it's expected that I'd be there for the big moments in their lives. Not just their parents, but my dad's parents, who I don't know outside of some of the time I spent with him. Also feel like I need to be a good brother, and they expect me to take this role seriously. Which I find crazy since I don't know any of these people all that much, and I don't want to. If it's not my dad's weekends, I do miss the big stuff, and I don't try to be there for them. I got invited to go trick-or-treating with them on Halloween. I said no. I got a reply back that they really wanted me to come. I didn't, and I got sent so many texts from my dad's phone and phones that I assumed are his wife's and his parents claiming I'm shitty for missing another big moment for my half-siblings. I blocked the others, but dad's number is still doing this crap. Am I the asshole? Hmm. Huh? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I'm gonna say no. It does kind of suck that he's like doing all that, but I mean, you can't force somebody to do that. But I don't know. The kid, he's right. The kids did do nothing wrong, but I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think that may be the asshole. I missed something my half siblings were excited about, and I was told it was another big moment. I'm never there unless I'm forced because I don't want to be. But that might be shitty because I know they want it and I was given enough time to figure out a costume for the night if I wanted to dress up too. Mostly, I know they're being hurt by all this, so maybe I am the asshole. I feel bad for OP because at least they're acknowledging that their siblings feel bad. But it's like... <laughs> I don't know, because I'm really wondering if the parents, like, dad and um, stepmom are, like, hyping up that he's going to come and stuff, and then he doesn't, and then it does just kind of disappoint, and it just feels like he's being set up, and it's not fair. If you do want to have a relationship with your siblings, I feel like something like that shouldn't be, I don't know, I'm going to say no, I'm just going to say no. Not the asshole. I got invited to go trick-or-treating with them on Halloween. I said no. I got a reply back saying they really wanted me to come. I didn't, and I got sent so many texts from my dad's phone and phones that I assumed are his wife's and his parents claiming I'm shitty for missing another big moment. That is your dad's do-over family, and you have no relationship with them. By the way, how is Halloween trick-or-treating being a big moment for your half-siblings? That's what I wondered. Maybe in the same sense they'd remember it when they were older as a standout kind of thing. But it's such a weak argument and it makes no sense to me that it would be a big moment for them. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with not the asshole. <laughs> would I be the asshole if I charged for a cover-up of a nasty tattoo I did? <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. A nasty tattoo that I did. And you're, they went back to you for the cover-up. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a tattoo artist, but it's just like, you're calling it nasty, so it's like, what? I don't know. I don't know. You're gonna say no? I'm gonna say yes. But I'm also not versed in this universe at all, so... They wanted it. You know, fair point, fair point. I'm one year into tattooing. This is the first cover-up I do of a tattoo that I did. I tattooed a saying in Arabic on a girl's back a few weeks ago, and we both thought it translated to appreciate life, because the translation was right under the words in Arabic in the photo she sent me. She texted me a few days ago saying that she wants me to delete the pic of her tattoo off of my page because it actually translates to something awful. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> You're right. You were so right, Jacko. I was so shocked. I ran the pic through Translate Lens myself like five times and the tattoo did, in fact, mean something gross. I usually do check what clients' tattoos mean beforehand when they are in a foreign language, but I did not check this one because the translation came with the reference pic. I quickly deleted the post and told her that I'm happy to work on a cover-up together if she's down for it. She- Wait. I'm happy to do a work on a cover-up together if she's down for it. She was, and I finished the design today. She likes it, and we were gonna do it. The thing is, I feel very guilty about this whole thing because it never happened to me before. I feel really sorry that I put that on someone's body and I am very happy to cover it, but I feel so ashamed for charging her for this cover-up because I somehow feel like it's my fault. I, as the artist, should have checked the translation, and I'm afraid that there is a possibility that she thought the cover-up was free. So when I tell her a price, she will blame me for the tattoo and end up on bad terms. It was her first tattoo and we have a common friend, so she may think that I offered my cover-up services as an apology. 
But TBH, I don't even know if I did anything wrong. Maybe I'm overthinking. I'm so conflicted and I don't know what to do. On one side, I do feel for her and I want to help her. But on the other side, this is a complex tattoo that I can't really afford to give out for free. If she was my friend, I would totally do it for free. But she's a friend's girlfriend's friend. So I don't even know what our status is to be able to give out my resources like that. Would I be the asshole for Charger for the cover-up? If I do, I will cut it down a lot though. Oh, then no. I'm gonna say no, especially if they like can't- like... Yeah, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> just give her a discount? Yeah, uh, just giving her a discount I think would be the best way to go about it. Edit, to be more specific, I did not make the writing design myself. I just copied the picture she sent me. The picture she sent me had the design and appreciate life under it as translation. I'm calling the tattoo nasty because it is. It actually translates to I'm rotten. Damn. <laughs> After further research, I found that the pic she sent me circulated on Tumblr a few years ago as a meme, but we obviously were not aware of that. It's just words on a white background. Damn. Yeah, not the- I, I agree. Not the asshole. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think that might be the asshole. I'm a tattoo artist and I did tattoo in a foreign language that means something nasty because I did not check the translation and I want to charge for covering it up. And two, it made it might make me the asshole because I did not check the translation, which is my fault, so charging for my mistakes sucks. If it I feel like it should like if it was like the same degree, if it was just the wording, because I'm imagining it was just like just like curse well not curse if it's Arabic, just Arabic and that's it, right? So, but if she she wants the cover up and it does get more intricate, I, f I feel like it's inco it's completely valid. Like it really is, especially if they're going to be offering a discount because like it is they should have checked. But also, I don't know what the whole thing is. To be fair, if you want it on your body forever, especially if it's in a different language, you need to be triple, quadruple checking that sh dude. Like. If you yourself, if you thought that that was a really cute, you're putting that on your body forever. It's up to the client to like look into that too. Not the asshole. If the client brings something in a foreign language and says tattoo this on me, I think you should have a policy for telling them if you don't know what it says and will take no responsibility of it if it means that what they think it means. It might be a good idea to have that in writing if you agree to do such tattoos in the future. Check out the policies others have in place. This is why getting random words in other languages on you is dumb. I agree.